All right, so we're going to start talking about psychometric charts. So this is in video 5.2, so if you want to see it explained in a little bit more detail, go ahead and click on over there. But for now, let's go ahead and very quickly go over this. So psychometric charts, they're only valid at one ATM, um, uh, but you can get a lot of property data there very, very quickly. Um, so you can get the specific humidity, uh, which is this guy, omega. You can get relative humidity. You can get dry bulb temperature and that dry bulb temperature is the temperature that you think of when you think of um, temperature. It's just temperature. Um, and then the wet bulb temperature is the lowest temperature that you can get to by uh, evaporative cooling alone. We don't use it too much, but it is a property that's on those psychrometric charts. Uh, specific volume of the dry air if you need that. Um, and then the specific enthalpy of the moist air, which if you do watch that video for um, psychrometric charts, this guy right here, it's the specific enthalpy of the dry air uh, portion. And then these are the other guys. So this is the, right, this is the specific enthalpy of the uh, dry air. This is the uh, specific humidity. And then of course that last term there is the specific, uh, specific I'm sorry, specific enthalpy of the water vapor. So let's just kind of real quick, Look at our psychrometric chart here. Um, so this is in your thermodynamics packet. Um, so make sure that you're aware of that. Down here at the bottom on, I guess, what we're going to call the x-axis. Oh, go away, you. This is your dry bulb temperature. So you could call it T or T with a little subscript dry bulb. Um, so let's just, you know, I'm going to put... I'm going to put a dot right here. Let's put a dot right there. So that right there would be dry bulb temperature or just a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Right? And then on the Y axis, you've got uh, your humidity ratio. That's the specific humidity. So let's just kind of look and see what Trace this guy on over. It looks like he'd be about a specific humidity about, oops, 0 0.009 uh, kilograms of water per kilogram of dry air. And do be aware that, um, you know, you do have uh, uh, um, uh, tables and English units as well as uh, SI units. And this just happens to be SI units. Um, if I wanted to know... Let's see the specific enthalpy of that dry air. So this is specific enthalpy of moist of the dry air component plus the specific humidity times the specific enthalpy of that uh, moist of, of the water vapor within that moist air. Now let's see, kind of gotta kind of go up a little diagonally here. Yeah. You know, you're reading something off of a table, so there is going to be some variability in how you read it, but it looks like about 48 uh, kilojoules per kilogram of dry air is what your specific enthalpy would be. And then you'll also notice, and I'm going to put him in purple, actually, your wet bulb temperature. So, or the saturation temperature. Uh, so... That's that guy right there. So it's the wet bulb temperature and those lines of wet bulb temperature and the lines for specific enthalpy of the moist air, they are parallel to one another. Um, but this guy, like if I kind of traced him up, so you've got 20, 10 degrees, and then this would be, what, that'd be 15 degrees. So this would be, actually, would that be? Yeah, 15 this one's 16, that's about 17, 18, 19. So this looks like we would have, and I'll write it up here, you'd have a wet bulb temperature of about 17 degrees. Uh, what else do we have? We also have, if I kind of look up here at the other things. So we have addressed this one, that's on the y-axis. This one, this is, oh, we haven't done that yet, so let's do that. So the lines of relative humidity, you can see they sort of go up. Well, that's not really great. They sort of go up like this, right? Sort of curved like that. So you've got 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. So I would put maybe a relative humidity of this guy. It's between 40 and 50. So I might say 45%. Um, you know, I mean, like I said, it is, it, it is a, a, a table 
or uh, not a table it's a chart a graph sort of and so you're you know there is going to be some variability between um between your answers um all right so we've got the relative humidity we talked about the dry bulb temperature the wet bulb temperature um we talked about this last one so i guess the only other thing that we need to talk about is the specific volume of that dry air so it's the specific volume v with a little subscript a indicating that it's for the dry air component um i'm going to use blue so those are the lines that kind of go like this so you can see specific volume and it's a meters cubed per kilogram of dry air so it's the specific volume subscript a so i've got this one is 0.9 this guy right here would be 0.85 so you could see this would be 0.86 actually no that'd be 0.87 this one right here would be 0.86 yeah so you could see 0.85, 0.86, 0.87, 0.88, uh, whew, uh, eyes are crossing, 0 0.88, 0 0.89, and then that guy, last guy is 90, or yeah, 90% or 0.9. So it looks like it's between 0.85 and 0.86. So if I were feeling like really confident, I might say it's got a relative humidity about 0.8. I don't know, 8575 because it's it's a little little bit more than halfway, but once again, you're reading it off of a graph and so or a chart and so there is going to be a little bit of variability in, in between these answers and that's okay. You are you could also calculate these things. Um so for example, let's look at this guy. So the last one, specific enthalpy of the moist air, you can absolutely calculate this. Um, so you can get those HA values. If you know the temperature, you can get that out of, um, this would be the H value at T in your ideal air tables. Right, so that would be table, what, A22, I believe. Um, this guy, your specific humidity, you're going to have to calculate that. 0 0.622, got to get that partial pressure, PV over E minus PV, right? Got to calculate it. And then your H sub, uh, HV, you could approximate that as H sub G at whatever temperature it is. Um, and that's valid at most of the, you know, typical HVAC application sort of ranges that you might be looking at. Um, so you do have the option of doing this, uh, but if you are at one ATM and you have those charts available to you, this is going to be much, much easier for you to, for you to handle. Um, and I can pretty much guarantee that any problem that you're going to be asked on a test is going to be at one ATM. So some people really hate those charts. Most people use them, but some people... Oh, and when I say student, when I say people, I mean students. Some students really don't like them, don't like the look of them. They do make your life easier if you can get used to using them. Um, but yeah, so I would, I would, I would suggest making sure that you get used to using them. But you do have other options of, you know, calculating those things by hand and by using those thermodynamic tables if you wanted to. So, all right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about simple heating and cooling. All right, so we are now going to be started to talk about just simple heating and cooling. If you want to see this in a little bit more detail, uh, watch video 5.3. But essentially with simple heating and cooling, well, your it simple just indicates that there is no humidification right no humidification with cool with heating um simple cooling uh no dehumidification in, in other words the water you you're not adding water by humidifying the air and you're not taking water away from that uh, moist air by allowing condensation to occur so with simple heating you don't really have to worry about condensation um, and if the problem isn't specifically telling you that the air is humidified right it is nothing to worry about um, so let's just kind of look at simple heating uh, where you're not adding or take away taking away water by uh, dehumidification um, and so in this case what's really important to remember is that this ratio 
of uh, the mass of the the water vapor to the mass of the dry air that that ratio isn't going to change so that means your specific humidity is not going to change and that's going to be really important so if you establish that it is a simple heating process because it's you're just told that the air is being heated up and that's kind of it you're not told that there's any water being added through humidification then you know that it's a simple heating process and then the specific humidity is going to be the same at state one and state two now for dehumidification for a simple cooling process or for really any cooling process you need to figure out okay have i cooled below the dew point temperature because if you look at that tv diagram uh, so the little blue dot that has a one beside it, um, that's your, you are here, right? That's the state of the water in that moist air. And as long as you don't cool below that dew point temperature, which is this guy right here, as long as you don't cool below that, you can cool all the way up to it, but as long as you don't cool below it, um, you won't have any condensation. All the water vapor that's in that moist air from, from the start is gonna be there at state two. And so same thing, same thing, your specific humidity at one and specific humidity at two are gonna be exactly the same. There's a little, uh, little kind of note here that if there is no condensation, your uh, mole fraction of that water vapor, this guy right here is not going to change, right? So the mole fraction of that water vapor at one is gonna be equal to the mole fraction of that water vapor at two. Um, and as long as, right, as long as you're cooling along a line, as long as you're cooling at constant pressure, right, as long as this guy is constant and this guy is constant because you don't have any condensation, your partial pressure of that water vapor is also constant. Now that will not be the case when we talk about dehumidification. Um, so we're gonna put a pin in that idea right now, but just be aware that for a process that does not involve humidification or dehumidification, um, that mole fraction will not change. And as long as the overall pressure, right? The moist air pressure, the, just the pressure, as long as that doesn't change, your partial pressure PV does not change either. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how we can analyze these guys because we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to have to apply energy balances to calculate things like the rate of heat transfer from this, from this moist air for that simple heating process or simple cooling process. And for all of these guys, you're going to be applying your mass balance and you're going to be applying your energy balance. So your mass balance up here at the top, DMDT equals sum of the M dots coming in minus the sum of the M dots going out. And you can do this on each of the individual components, just like you can do, you know, for the, for the mixture itself, right? So for the dry air, if we look back up here, well, yeah, actually, there we go. Just want to have the, the, the picture the picture up here um, kind of in my head. Um, so here's my inlet, here's my outlet. So uh, you've got one inlet really for the dry air, you've got one outlet for the dry air. And so M dot A1, M dot A2, those are both equal to each other. And so you could just sort of drop that subscript and call that M dot A. The water vapor is the one that you gotta, gotta worry about because if you, uh, have condensation, then you'll actually have a second outlet for the water vapor or for the water. Um, but for a simple heating and cooling process, you've got water coming in with that moist air, water leaving with the moist air. Um, and so you've only got really one inlet and one outlet for that process. So for a simple heating and cooling process, no humidification, no dehumidification, M dot V1 and M dot V2 are equal to one another. So so that's handy and that allows us to drop some subscripts if we want. So now let's go ahead and apply our energy balance. So all of these processes, we're gonna model them as steady states. So DEDT is equal to one another and we are also going to ignore kinetic and potential energy changes. So our assumptions, just kinda sort of put that up here. So our assumptions, we're assuming steady state changes in kinetic energy, 
changes in potential energy, both of those are equal to, uh, to zero. We don't have any work for this process. You've just got moist air coming in, moist air going out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. And now I have U dot equals the sum of the M dot H's coming in minus the sum of the M dot H's going out. Have I done that correctly? Actually, no, it's out minus M. So I could divide this up. So going out at the outlet, I have two things. I have the dry air and I've got the moist uh, or the water vapor. So I have M dot A H A two plus M dot V H V two. Notice that I don't put any subscripts after the, the M dot A and M dot V because I've already established and I don't really need to. Minus M dot A H A one minus M dot V H V one. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna gather like terms together. Um, well, actually, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll leave it the way it is. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to isolate this M dot A on the outside. So this becomes H A plus, this would have to be M dot V over M dot A, wouldn't it? Right, if I wanted that equality to work out okay. Um, so this is at two, right? And I've also got the same thing at one. So H A one plus M dot V over M dot A, HV1. And now what I can do is I can note that this guy right here, that's just specific humidity, right? Because specific humidity, it's defined as the mass of the water vapor to the mass of the dry air. And I could just extend that, oops, I could extend that to mass flow rates, and I really haven't changed anything. So all of that's good. So now I'm just gonna write it a little bit more pretty. So this is gonna be HA plus our specific humidity times HV2 minus same thing at state one. Okay, so that's very convenient. And this is the equation, the governing equation for heat transfer rate for a simple heating or cooling process. And you'll notice, you may have noticed already, this guy right here is a parameter. That's that specific enthalpy of the moist air on your psychrometric chart. So you can definitely, you can look up HA values. You can approximate H sub V as, or H sub V as equal to H sub G at T. You can calculate that specific humidity for, you know, uh, you can calculate each of those terms at state one and state two, but it's gonna be a lot easier just to kind of look it up on that psychrometric chart if you can get used to, to doing so. And then this M dot A, we'll talk about how we handle that. It really just depends on what the problem gives you. So let's go ahead and let's work our problems. We're on to problem seven. All right, so problem seven, we've got moist air, 30 degrees Celsius, one ATM. So that one ATM is sort of a flag to me that, yep, I could use those psychrometric charts. Um, once again, uh, your, you know, the problem that you have on your test is almost certainly guaranteed to be at one ATM. Um, so you, you can use those, or you're going to be able to use those charts, but if you don't want to, you know, Feel free to, to calculate all those HA values, HV values, specific uh, humidity, all that stuff. You can do it by hand. It just makes it a little bit more difficult. So, uh, but I went ahead and I've put it here. So I've got moist air, 30 degrees Celsius, 1 ATM, 50% relative humidity, got that. Um, and then it says that moist air is coming in at a rate of 600 kilograms per hour. So I've got that as M dot, one so that's the mass flow rate of the entire all the moist air and then it exits at 20 degrees celsius tells us that we can ignore kinetic and potential energy effects which i was going to anyway we also are saying that there's no pressure drop across that heat exchanger um, and of course since we're going from 30 to 20 this is clearly a cooling process and so q dot is leaving uh, our, our control volume so the first thing that I'll notice is that 
Uh, it is a cooling process, so I do have to worry about condensation. And so I need to figure out, is there any condensation? So to do that, I have two options. Number one, I can calculate the dew point temperature. And remember that dew point temperature, this is just uh, T sat at whatever that partial pressure is coming in, the partial pressure of the water vapor coming in. And remember, you can do that a couple of ways, um, depending on what they have given to you. So I have the relative humidity, so that will probably be useful, right? I know the relative humidity at one, it's defined as PV1 over PG1. Of course, PG1 is sat at T1. Um, and so you could look up those values. You could say, okay, well, I know PV1 is sat at T1. And then I just multiply that by my relative humidity and then figure out what that saturation temperature is. Um, this guy right here, you can find in table, what would this be? This would be in table A2. So you can do that and figure out, you know, if your T2, if that 20 degrees, that is greater than or equal to that TDP, then you don't have condensation. In fact, that is what you will find for this particular problem, but I do want to show you an easier way to do it. Um, and this is by using those psychrometric charts. So let's do that together. Um, so I'm going to come all the way down here. So I wanted to at least sort of like uh, start using these psychrometric charts and start drawing stuff on there. And I think it's easier if we include it in the notes. So we're coming in 1 ATM. Uh, 12 degrees. Uh, well, let's see. This is not. I'm sorry. Eh, okay. So we're coming in at 30 degrees. Right. So this is our our T1, and then our relative humidity is 50 percent. I think. Let me make sure. Yep, 50 percent. So great. So that would be. It's kind of. I have to zoom in here because otherwise. We'll get all kinds of confused. That's fine. So we're somewhere along that line right there. And 50%, that would put us right there. So that's, that's my state one. Now what I'm going to see is, remember for a, and I've got to cool all the way to this guy to T2 to 20 degrees Celsius. So what I'm trying to see is can I cool, and I know that it's a simple cooling process if this humidity ratio is constant, right? So I'm gonna write that down. I know simple cooling if this guy and this guy are equal to one another. So what I'm gonna do is see, can I cool along a line of constant specific humidity and reach 20 degrees Celsius? And it looks like, I'm gonna close. All right, I know, probably, there we go. So it's kinda close but I definitely can cool to 20 degrees Celsius along that line of constant specific humidity. So I know, yes, it's a simple cooling process. No, it, no, I didn't have uh, condensation. Now it'd be a different story if I said, oh no, we cooled to 10, to 10 degrees Celsius. Clearly I cannot cool along a line of constant uh, specific humidity, constant humidity ratio. So if I cooled to 10 degrees Celsius, absolutely, you would have condensation. Um, and actually, if you look up what, I wanna kinda, if I cooled right here, this corresponding temperature, about 18, um, if you calculated what your dew point temperature is, it should be, would be about 18 degrees. Yeah. 
here we go. So, yeah, trying to show about 18 degrees Celsius. And you can actually see that wet bulb temperature corresponds to the same thing. Um, so that your, your saturation temperature is actually, uh, or your dew point temperature, I should say, is at about 18, a little bit above 18 degrees Celsius. So if you use that option one, that's what you would calculate for that dew point temperature. It would be about 18, 18 and change. So I will say use for your second option, you can use those psychrometric charts if you can pull from T1 to T2 along a line of constant specific humidity, there's no condensation. And you will have, i.e., you will have a simple cooling process. So we we could use either one, but I know just based on what we just saw, this is a simple cooling process. All right. So I'm trying to find Q dot and if I applied, if I applied my conservation of mass and my first law, like I did just a minute ago when I derived these guys, I would see that my Q dot is equal to M dot A times HA plus your specific humidity HV. So that whole term right there in the parentheses, that is the, the specific enthalpy at state two. This is the specific enthalpy of the moist air at one. And that's it, that's my governing equation. Now, you may memorize this and that's fine. However, it is really, really, really important to be able to go through this song and dance yourself um, because you know whatever process you may be given on a test it might not just be a simple cooling process or a simple heating process it might be a little variation on the process that we talked about and it will be up to you to derive your equation so don't don't just memorize understand how you got to this equation in the first place, right? So that when you are asked to do it, then you can, okay? All right, so let's go pull these numbers off of the chart. I can't really get M dot A, but we'll handle that in a second. What I can do is I can, I can get this guy and this guy. So let's look at our charts. And since I've already actually done a little bit of the legwork of, of uh, drawing on here, I think this will be good. So I can go ahead. Let me you know, sort of line up there. That line out about there. So it looks state one. Probably about right there. One, two, three, four, five. This is about 65. This guy is about one, two, Three, four, about 54. So we've got 54 kilojoules per kilogram of dry air for state two and 65 for state one. So 54. This is 54 kilojoules per kilogram. This is 65 kilojoules per kilogram. And it's of dry air. You know, typically I just write kilojoules per kilogram with the understanding that it is per kilogram of dry air. But, um, you know, if you leave that off, it, it's fine. But do know that it's per kilogram of dry air. All right. So now let's worry about this guy. So I don't know. Let's see. So I've got 
one thing that they did give me, uh, they gave me M.1. So my M.1 was 600 kilograms per hour. So that, and that's kilograms of the moist air, which can, is comprised of the dry air and the water vapor. Um, so I know that for when we talked about ideal gas mixtures back in unit four, we said, well, if you have an ideal gas mixture, you know that the mass of the mixture is equal to the sum of the masses of the components. And the same is true for mass flow rates. So for this guy, the two components for the dry air and water vapor. So this is M dot A1 plus M dot B2. And yes, is it state one, but remember my conservation of mass on each of those components for a simple heating and cooling process, M dot A and M dot V, M dot A1, M dot A2, those are the same. M dot V1, M dot V2, those are the same. So I could just drop the subscripts there. So it might not be obvious as to how this is going to help me, um, but let's just keep on going. So I, once again, I know M dot one, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to isolate M dot A on the outside. So now this would be one plus M dot V over M dot A. So remember, we've done that. We did that when we were deriving the equation, the first law for a simple heating or cooling process. We did that little sort of uh, maneuver there. and reason that we're doing that is because m dot v over m dot a is a specific humidity. So now I have an equation for my m dot a. It's just going to be m dot one over one plus our specific humidity, which is the same at state one as it is at state two. It's a simple process. So let's go pull that that value off of here. It's like that. It's like way over here. And so 0 0.0135, I'd have to say. Yeah. So 0 0.0135, and that's kilograms of water per kilogram of dry air. So let's go look over here. So this guy. Uh, 1 plus 0 0.0, is it 0, 0? Forget already. 0, 0.135. Okay. And this is kilograms of water or a gram of dry air. Yeah. And this is 600 kilograms per hour. And it's kilograms of water per kilogram of dry air. Um, and then so now I've got an equation with this m dot a. So let's actually. number for that. Not the same. So this is going to be 600 divided by 1.05. So okay. So now this becomes, this is 592 kilograms, and it's kilograms of dry air per hour. And so you can see, you can see when I multiply kilograms of dry air per hour times kilojoules per kilogram of dry air, I'm going to get what uh, kilogram, what is that? It's going to be kilojoules per hour. Yeah, that's what I'm going to get. So this is going to be this. What is that? So it's going to be times 11, isn't it? So 6512. Right, 6512. And that'll be kilojoules per hour. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I'll kind of box that guy right there. Okay. All right. So 
guess the next problem is problem eight. All right, so now we're on problem eight, and I think this is the last one we're going to get to today. So here we've got moist air that is being heated, um, and it's being heated at a constant pressure, 1 atm. So once again, I can absolutely use those psychrometric charts. I want to know the heat transfer rate and the exiting relative humidity. So it is a simple heating process. There is no indication that I am, re I am adding uh, moisture in the form of humidification or anything like that. It is just truly you know, just a simple heating process. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start by drawing all this out on my psychrometric chart. So if you kind of scroll down, you'll see where that is. So there we go. So once again, still in SI units and let's go ahead and draw some stuff here. So state one, I'm coming in at 12 degrees. So two, so it's gonna be, oh my goodness, I have to scroll. I'm all the way in here because otherwise I can't my eyes start crossing. And actually, this is a good time to tell you that you uh, will have um, on your test, I will print out an extra copy of your psychrometric chart. Um, and that way you can draw on it as you see fit um, because yeah, I don't know about you. I have to draw on it. And then my relative humidity is 30%. So yeah, looks like that's along this line right here. And so I'll draw here. That's my state one. And this is a heating process all the way to 25. So right there. Actually, let's let's do another color so we can kind of differentiate where we're So this is somewhere around there. Yeah, somewhere along that guy right there. But you'll notice I kind of erase that and that. So I know so 12 degrees, that's T1. They they tell me T2. 25 degrees Celsius, but that that's it. That's the only thing they tell me, but they, they tell me, you know, obviously clearly I'm, I'm heating up from 12 degrees to 25 degrees. And so I'm not humidifying. I really don't have to worry about condensation because I'm not cooling. And so as I've already said, it's a simple heating process, that humidity ratio, the specific humidity, it is going to be constant. And so Kind of look over here. So I'm going to be, whatever happens, it's going to be along this line of constant uh, specific humidity. So it looks like, oh boy. There we go. So there's my state two. There's my state two. So from one to two. That's what I'm talking about. Perfect. All right, so drawing it on my psychrometric chart, I think that will help me. I am supposed to figure out what the relative humidity is, and that's actually going to be really, really easy for me because the relative humidity, somewhere between, at state two, we're somewhere between 10 and 20%. It's not exactly halfway, so I'm going to say it's about 13%, right? So I can already, just because I've drawn it on that chart, I can go ahead and write that up here. So um, I don't know, what am I going to say? Uh, drawing on my psychrometric chart, I know that the specific humidity is the same at state one and state two because it's a simple heating process because that's the only thing going on. I'm just heating it up to a higher temperature, up to 25 degrees Celsius. And so from that, I can see that that relative humidity at two is about 13%. So I will box that. Okay. Now I'm going to, what? I need to calculate what the heat transfer rate is. So this is going back to applying your first law. 
and your conservation of mass. I'm not going to do it again because we've already done it once here. I've also done it in the video, uh, I think video 5.4, where we talk about simple heating and cooling processes. Um, so if you need to see it a couple of times, watch the video a couple of times. Uh, but what we get is that Q dot is equal to, and it's M dot A, times specific humidity, or specific enthalpy, I should say, specific enthalpy at 2, minus the specific enthalpy at 1. Ooh. Okay, too many specific somethings. All right, so I know that I could really pull this guy and this guy off the tables, no problem. So let's go ahead and do that, or at least uh, off the charts, right? So it's like at state 1. This is going to be kind of going up here. This is going to be kind of up here. So I don't know. It's 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 really it's in somewhere in between what 18 and 19. I I'm going to put it at eight. what did I I I actually have something. I think I said 18. Yeah. That's that's for state one, and then for state two, probably about 32, right, give or take. So we've got 18 and 32. So 18 at state one, 32 at state two. So this is going to be two, it's 18 kilojoules per kilogram of dry air, kilojoules of kilogram of dry air. And then my M dot A, let's see. So the thing that they gave me that would tell me something about the rate at which things are happening is that volumetric flow rate. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with that. So I know V dot 1, it's equal to well, I know what it is. It's what was it again? <laughs> I think six six kilogram uh, six minutes minutes cubed per minute. There we go, six minutes cubed per minute. But I also know because I took thermo one, I know that this is also just m dot one times v one, right? Now, I also know. Remember Dalton's model. If I knew the specific volume at one for the moist air, great. If I knew the mass flow rate at one, great. But I don't know either of those. Um, however, remember Dalton's model. Dalton's model said the temperature of the component and the temperature of the mixture are the same. And it also said, though I know this, but it also said the volume of the component and the volume of the mixture are the same. And so I could also extend that to say the volumetric flow rate of each of those components and the volumetric flow rate of, of uh, the mixture are the same. So from that, I could say that this is equal to V dot A1. And now I'm getting somewhere because I can also say this is M dot A1, specific volume of the dry air at one. Of course, I can drop that subscript for the M dot A portion because my conservation of mass would have already told me that it's the it's the same at the inlet and the outlet. And then this guy is actually something I could pull off of my table. So let's go do that. So let's see. I promise I, I think I skipped over the TV diagram before, but we'll draw the process on the TV diagram here. So we're looking for the specific volume of that dry air at state one. So that's 0.8, that's 0.85, and it looks like it's going to be right there on this line right here. So I would put that as 0.81, wouldn't you? I think so. So let's go ahead and put that up here. This is 0 0.81, and it's meters cubed, and it's per kilogram of dry air. These are per kilogram of dry air, right? And so you can see that the units, that kilogram of dry air, it's going to cancel out. So 
Oh, let's see. So we have, if I wanted to know, m dot a is, so that's going to be, so it's going to be 6 divided by 0.81, so 7.41, right, 7.4 and change, 7.41, um, Seven point right. Yeah, six divided by point eight one. Seven point four one um kilograms of I air. And I believe it's in it's of per minute. All right. So now we've got our M dot A. So let's see, thirty two minus eighteen. And that times that looks like 103.7. So this is going to be 103.7. And this is going to be kilojoules per minute. Perfect. So if we were to calculate M dot A, what I'd actually have to do, just so you know, if I didn't look this M dot A up on the psychrometric chart, or the, the specific volume VA, I could have calculated him using, say, the ideal gas law. So this would be RT over P, but it's the specific gas constant of the air, partial pressure of the air. I would have to figure out what the partial pressure of that water vapor was at state one to be able to get the partial pressure of the air. It's a lot of work, um, and so I don't plan to go over it in class because you will be able to just use your psychrometric charts. Um, but yeah, or at least I don't plan to go over it at this point because you won't need it for the test. As long as you can use those charts, you're going to be just fine. Um, if I were going to draw the behavior of that water um, on a TV diagram, right? It is a constant pressure process. And it's a heating process. Here's one, two. This is the vapor pressure. And you'll notice because there's no condensation, because I'm not, well, I'm not cooling, right? Uh, but there's no condensation, there's no humidification. It's a constant pressure process. P1, P2 are equal to one another. There's no humidification or con, uh, con, no humidification or condensation, so the mole fraction doesn't change. And so you can see, based on that, the vapor pressure doesn't change either. So that's it. And we're just going from, you know, T1 to T2. Okay. All right. So I guess that's it. And next time we meet, we will go over what problem... Problem nine, I guess. All right. Thank you.